Hypercalcemia is calcium level above 10 mg per deciliter and this is the total calcium corrected to albumin. It's categorized based on the severity into mild 10 to 12, moderate 12 to 14 and above 14 as severe. Now it's very important to understand the difference between ionized or free calcium versus total calcium. Calcium in general in the body, 40 to 45 percent of total calcium is free or ionized. That means the rest 45 to 50 percent are bound to protein mainly albumin it's very important to understand that total serum calcium go up and down as the albumin level up goes up and down as well the calcium level goes up or down by 0.8 milligram with each one milligram up or down of albumin so it's very important to correct the total calcium with albumin level and there is different formulas there you can use or you can rely on the free or ionized calcium if your facility does this test and if we're going to use the ionized or free calcium to decide the severity 5.6 to 8 is mild 8 to 10 is moderate and above 10 is severe again this is assay dependent your facility may use a different assay that use different numbers so pay attention to that again correct total calcium for albumin whether high or low albumin some people they only correct if low albumin or again use free ionized calcium if readily available at your facility now all patients with hypercalcemia we need need to start low calcium diet less than 1000 mg per day avoid medication that can worsen hypercalcemia thiazides any calcium supplements vitamin d supplements especially if it's above 800 units per day and lithium volume depletion and immobility we need to avoid that before we move forward please subscribe to my substack to receive a summary of this video delivered to your inbox or you can read it directly on the app hypercalcemia treatment is guided by its severity so the first thing we need to decide is how severe the hypercalcemia is it mild moderate or severe mild hypercalcemia where total calcium is 10 to 12 milligram per deciliter or the free calcium or ionized 5.6 to 8 milligram per deciliter again your facility may use a different reference for this plus there is no symptoms or only the presence of mild symptoms remember that if there is severe symptoms which i will come to very soon then this goes into severe hypercalcemia these patients they do not need to be admitted they can just have outpatient follow up with the measures we just mentioned with low calcium diet adequate hydration avoid immobility avoid any medication that can worsen hypercalcemia how about moderate hypercalcemia the total calcium as we mentioned 12 to 14 milligram per deciliter or free calcium 8 to 10 milligram per deciliter if it is a chronic and asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic we treat it similar to mild hypercalcemia without patient follow-up now on the other hand if it's acute or there is presence of severe symptoms we treat it similar to severe hypercalcemia calcemia so it's very important because any acute rise in calcium is most most more likely to cause symptoms specifically neurological symptoms severe hypercalcemia the total calcium is above 14 or the free calcium above 10 milligram per deciliter regardless of symptoms these patient needs inpatient treatment remember that now we keep saying symptoms symptoms mild symptoms of hypercalcemia i just want you to remember a few symptoms especially the severe one the mild constipation fatigue depression lack of concentration which can be very non-specific the severe Severe one you need to pay attention the confusion or decreased level of consciousness very serious or symptoms similar to diabetes right polyuria polydipsia and that can lead to volume depletion leading to acute kidney injury muscle weakness nausea and vomiting now EKG changes like short QTC always belong to the severe signs and symptoms so they need immediate treatment treatment of this acute moderate or severe hypercalcemia it's inpatient treatment only we need to have as I said the corrected calcium is equal or above 40 milligram per deciliter or their severe symptoms or the ionized calcium as we mentioned is above 10. Three main elements of this treatment fluid resuscitation calcitonin and bisphosphonate and they should be given all together right now the fluid resuscitation and calcitonin are kind of the acute therapy they drop calcium within one to two days the bisphosphonate helps with the acute therapy but mainly for sustained effect and decrease calcium after two to four days fluid resuscitation isotonic fluid for the first one to two days 200 to 300 mil per hour and watch for volume overload signs and if there is any full uh, volume overload signs use loop diuretics loop diuretics can increase or enhance the calcium urinary excretion they used to be a part of the treatment of hypercalcemia but now with the calcitonin and bisphosphonate we really don't need to use them now if there is volume overload and hypercalcemia from the get-go do not use iv fluid and just use loop diuretics calcium amount in lactate ringer is very trivial so don't shy 
have from using lactate ringer although every say everybody saying saline saline but i don't see a problem using lactate ringer as well the fluid has to be given as soon as possible remember that now and remember that the fluid is one to two days calcitonin it's given IM or subcutaneous only. Do not use nasal spray calcitonin in acute or in severe hypercalcemia. We usually give testing dose of 4 units per kg and check calcium in 4 to 6 hours. If there is a drop in calcium, then we give 4 units per kg BID for 1 to 2 days. Always use with IV fluid resuscitation and as soon as possible. If there is no drop in calcium, that's probably indicating this patients or that patient will not respond to calcitonin. This phosphonate is for acute and chronic management of hypercalcemia. IV zoledronic acid or pemidronate. Zoledronic acid is the main one we use. Unfortunately, in most hospitals, this has to be approved by a nephrologist uh, before we give it, as well as the pemidronate. The maximum effect is two to four days. We check vitamin D level because these patients, if they are vitamin D deficient, they go, they develop hypo prominent hypocalcemia after with the treatment of bisphosphonate and we check kidney function because bisphosphonates are contraindicated in advanced kidney impairment Soledronic acid we give single dose four milligram and it's iv and permidronate single dose 60 to 90 milligram as well iv now very important iv fluid and calcitonin as we mentioned reduce calcium more rapidly compared to bisphosphonate denosumab is another medication that can be used in patients with contraindication to bisphosphonate and we give 60 milligrams sub Q once and the contraindication for bisphosphonates are renal failure creatinine above or equal, equal or above 4.5 milligram per deciliter and if there is allergy to bisphosphonate and we can use it in refractory hypercalcium we use fluid calcitonin bisphosphonate but still the calcium is high we can add denosumab and in refractory hypercalcium it was 120 milligram sub Q loop diuretics can be used only if there is volume overload and hypercalcemia and can be also used in patients at risk of developing volume overload. Uh, let's say patients with heart failure or an advanced kidney impairment and we need to aggressively resuscitate them with the IV fluid. What you could do, you can give fluids and you can give loop diuretics once you feel they are you volumic. So the way I would do it, I start fluid, monitor them. Once I see they are you volumic, but I still want to give fluids, I can start loop diuretics at that point and loop diuretics are for acute therapy only. Hemodialysis is very effective and remove calcium within hours and only if medical therapy fails to correct severe hypercalcemia and the patient remains severely symptomatic. Glucocorticoids have slow effects and they mainly use in hypercalcemia caused by the increase in 1,2-dihydroxy vitamin D and we can see this in lymphoma, granulomatous disease like sarcoidosis, and other tumors. I borrowed this table from up to date, where there is a summary of these treatments. You see the onset of action. We have hours for the fluid resuscitation, four to six hours for calcitonin, bisphosphonate. They take days. Loop diuretics hours if we use it, and glucocorticoid two to five days. Dialysis, of course, very effective in hours. And denosumab takes four to ten days. Again, we use it only if there is contraindication to bisphosphonate or there is refractory hypercalcemia. Duration of action, IV fluid during infusion, calcitonin for eight hours, bisphosphonate two to four weeks, and loop diuretic similar to fluid during therapy, and denosumab four to 15 weeks. Another important thing here about calcitonin, which I forgot to mention, that calcitonin should not be used more than two days because of the risk of tachyphylaxis. Monitoring, monitor for signs of fluid overload, of course. Check calcium level four to six hours after the first calcitonin dose, the testing dose, then every 12 to, four to 24 hours, and monitor resolution or improvement of symptoms. And remember to treat the underlying problem with our hyperparathyroidism, tumor, granulomatous disease, etc. Some pitfall are shy fluid resuscitation. People start fluid at 75 cc an hour or 100 cc an hour. No, need to be generous. Give to 200 to 300 mil per hour. The only contraindication is signs of fluid overload or active pulmonary edema. At that time, we give loop diuretics or on the other hand, excessive IV fluid, not to stop the IV fluid after a couple of days and keep the fluids running for five, six, seven days. And the other thing is delay in starting IV fluid and calcitonin. I've seen this a lot on top of shying of giving adequate IV fluid. They, there is a delay in starting IV fluid or giving calcitonin and the delay in workup. Start workup right away as well. And then thanks for watching. And if you found this video useful, please share it with your colleagues. Give it a like. And if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please 
subscribe right now and remember that you can get a summary of this video by subscribing to my Substack. the link is below thanks for watching